For improved system performance, long-term financial returns, and less risk on your PV projects, look to the proven performance of DuPont Materials and Solutions. Hello and welcome to another PV Tech Newscast. Coming up, German and Chinese PV markets remain strong, more woes for the thin film sector, and has First Solar turned a corner? There has been a surge in demand for rooftop installations in Germany. New figures from the German Federal Network Agency show the country's mid-year subsidy change acted as a catalyst for new installations. In the first half of this year, more than 4.3 gigawatts was installed compared to just 1.71 gigawatts in the same period last year. While the first half of 2012 saw record installation figures, market research firm IHSI Supply believes the new feed-in tariff will prevent an end-of-year rush. In fact, IHS predicts under the new model, only 28% of installations slated for this year will take place in the fourth quarter. IHS is forecasting the world's largest solar market will reach 7.3 gigawatts in 2012, down just slightly from last year's 7.5 gigawatts. China's PV manufacturing base saw a major setback in the first and second quarters of 2012 with a severe slump in exports, according to IMS research. This sparked the government to step in and further raise its PV installation target to 50 gigawatts, up from 20. The latest quarterly report on China forecasts PV installations in the country will be a key driver in the growth of the global PV market. Installations are expected to grow quickly in the second half of this year, with over 10 gigawatt to be installed over the next two years. This week has delivered more woes for the thin film sector, with Shuko, Miasole and Sharp adjusting, and in the case of Shuko, exiting the market. German-based PV manufacturer Schuko announced it would permanently close all thin film facilities, affecting approximately 270 jobs. The company highlighted that its new energy division had seen its annual sales decline significantly since 2010, and those declines had continued in the first half of the year. Due to weak demand in core end markets and continued aggressive price declines of conventional crystalline silicon modules. Schuko had two thin film plants in Germany using applied materials Sunfab amorphous silicon technology. US-based SIG's thin film module startup Miasole said it was cutting its workforce dedicated to manufacturing and operations to preserve cash as a strategic partnership deal is expected within the next 60 to 90 days. Jobs are being retained in the technology and commercial areas as well as in its flexible thin film product areas while a deal is being worked out with an unidentified investor. And major PV manufacturer Sharp is reeling after significant quarterly losses from its electronics segment, primarily from its plate panel display operations. The company posted a quarterly loss of around 1.76 billion US dollars, while its solar energy group sales were down 18.2% at 534 million US dollars, generating an operating loss of 57.5 million. Sharp has started a major restructuring of all of its operations with its 160 megawatt amorphous silicon thin film Katsuragi solar plant being scaled back and employees relocated. Sharp retains two advanced thin film plants in Osaka and Sicily. Overall, Sharp said it would be reducing its workforce by approximately 5,000 from the present 57,000 employees. In related but contrasting thin film news, First Solar reported second quarter sales of 957 million US dollars, up a massive amount compared to the 497 million in the previous quarter. This was primarily due to revenue recognition starting on major large scale projects that continue to be built. With increased demand through the rest of the year, First Solar said it would raise production targets and raise revenue guidance for the year to between 3.6 and 3.9 billion US dollars. To meet demand, module production would be raised to as much as 1.9 gigawatt from previous guidance of between 1.4 and 1.7 gigawatts. 
Analysts were upbeat about First Solar's prospects for the year and suggest that it may have turned a corner in its restructuring and business refocus on emerging markets. And finally, PV Tech's most viewed story of the week was all about gold, silver, but not bronze, as the Olympics in London comes to an end. Even before black silicon technology, based on IP developed by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory and licensed to NatCore technology has reached commercialization, the technology will undergo a major material shift to reduce costs. Reflecting the challenges of bringing new technology to the PV market during a phase of steep material price declines, NREL has expanded its license agreement with the startup to use copper nanoparticles in the etching process instead of nanoparticles of gold or silver in order to halve the cost and increase the output of solar cells. A focus on innovative technologies that can be quickly commercialized is seen by many in the industry as a key catalyst to overcome massive overcapacity in the sector as it would quickly eliminate trailing edge module production. Well, that's all we have time for. Wherever you are, have a good week, and I'll see you next time.